Perfect. Go ahead. All right. Uh, thank you so much for Han. Uh, yeah. So hi everybody. So as the name suggests, I'm about like to share some like, but like basic like practices on like on GitHub and also just introduce GitHub who anyone who's not familiar to what GitHub is about. Uh, so though before that, I'm just do a quick introduction to myself. I'm basically a freelance Unity XR developer based in Malaysia in Southeast Asia. So I've been in the XR background for around like eight years, deliver some projects. And I'm also a recent graduate from XR Bootcamp. And I was honorary like being voted as top three community mentors uh, as well this year. So also I'd like to like announce I'm also attending the XR Hack Stockholm as a hacker myself. And I'm also looking for teammates. So I'm definitely like super excited as everyone else. Uh, so if you are seeking like, for collaboration for look or looking for a developer, just feel free to hit me up on Discord. Yeah, so let's go to like basically what our agenda. So basically there are three things. So I was just gonna explain like why do we need GitHub uh, during our hackathon, some uh, very basic uh, Git, GitHub operations, which will be which will be going like based on the Unity project. But those GitHub operations like they, they they are also like applicable like to other game engines as well and uh, of course there are some common pitfalls like while merging like merging updates like among your team members so let's talk about like github like why do we need it so for those who are not familiar with what github is about so github is basically like an online code, code sharing platform or for this case it's actually like it allows like sharing your unity project to your team members so that your team members can uh, edit edit like changes like to your unity project so it basically help you to manage uh your updates style of your project amongst like all of your team members so as a so as i mentioned uh you can allow like team collaboration as so which means that multiple team members can work simultaneously on a single project which is very important uh because uh, which i'll uh, talk in a bit and of course it allows like version control that checks like every change you made to a project and upload these changes to github and uh, the one most important thing is that you can easily revert between versions because uh, this is crucial because sometimes you may face like technical issues like, while working on the project and in case like something goes wrong you can go back like to your previous state of the project which is more stable so think of it like safe steps in games yeah. So yeah. So as I just mentioned, so in the hackathon, you you only have a tight, very tight timeline of like forty eight hours, or even less if you if you if you count of like your sleep time to prepare your build for submission. And uh, I would say it's very likely that uh, your team members will be like making like extremely rapid and simultaneous edits like to your project especially in bigger teams like for example one is like irresponsible for the code some is responsible for the vfx some is responsible for the ui it's very likely like the updates will be like made like simultaneously yeah so uh as i said like github so that's why github serves as an excellent management tool uh for your hackathon team and making sure your development process like much more efficient as effective as possible so for some of you I like, may ask like what if like I'm not a software developer because like GitHub is more of like a developer tool, right? So uh what if I am familiar with command lines? Like another like you ask ask yourself, do you like need like a very extensive knowledge in software engineering just to use GitHub? Uh so my answer will be no, actually. So uh basically like we have a, like a application for operating GitHub, which is called GitHub Desktop. So it's basically a beginner friendly uh visual based git management software. So it helps you track your project files, like no command line required. Uh, which is uh which is the main point is that it's user friendly for like non technical roles like outside the developer roles. And uh, I can show you some I show you an example like what GitHub desktop looks like. So basically this is the GitHub desktop. So this is uh. This is one one of the projects that I work with as a MVP submission for our XR Bootcamp. So you can see like like this is like from the very start like of the project. So like there are some like for example like imported the meta SDKs. I imported some assets. As you can see like not only like that it records like the history like of your updates to the project, but also includes like the file changes 
uh like basically not just like in locally but also online as well because yeah because uh your team members will need to sync those changes on their devices just to make sure that it gets everything that they need while working on the project. So this is uh with a uh, GitHub desktop. Uh yeah. So uh just like before before we start, uh so yeah, so you just want to register your account with uh, github.com. Uh of course, like it, it is free. I I noticed like like one question regarding does it you need a license on for the GitHub that GitHub or do you need to pay anything? The answer is no. Uh you can actually like use the uh GitHub. Uh, use the uh GitHub uh free plan, which you can like create as many repos as possible, and also like add as many uh team members as well. Yeah, so you can also download a GitHub desktop as well, and then just log in GitHub desktop using a register account. Yeah, so I noticed one comment that says that it doesn't have the Git, Git graphic tree. Uh, that is true. Uh, yeah. So one thing that I forgot to mention is that there are for like better alternatives for GitHub Desktop, such as a uh, Source Tree and Grid Kraken. I personally I use Source Tree myself. Uh, which is a, uh, which is my actually my preferred uh software of operating GitHub. But the reason that I'm recommending GitHub Desktop because uh it has like, it has like it has the least friction of like setting up the projects like not just for like developers but also for like other like non-developer roles as well but if 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 you choose like to use uh other softwares other than sorcery i think you absolutely feel free yeah so setting up with so it's sit down get help with your project so i'm just gonna showcase like real quick uh so for example like this is your xr hack project like for example, so yeah, so so like for example, this is your project. You already like set it up. So uh, so basically in your GitHub project, you can just uh, so just go to add local repository, and then you can just choose your local path. For example, so this is the project that I want to upload. So you want to you as your hackathon project. So you want to create a repository instead because uh, it's not uh. It's not like online yet, so uh, so you just like insert like, your name and uh, so your description, and uh, so I want to emphasize like one very important drop down, which is the git ignore. So uh, so basically like this is a this is a we cannot uh we ha we have to keep in mind that we have to choose the correct git ignore for your project. So uh, for in this case, if you're using Unity, you have to choose a Unity. So basically, what it's what it does. Is that because that like, your Unity project will have like cache files while you're working on the project? So what Git ignore does is that it ignores like those cache files and just like uh, it does not allow uh, it just to make sure that the cache files aren't aren't sync with the changes. Otherwise, it's gonna be like a lot of problems. Yeah. So uh, basically, so just make sure that this is selected properly. If you're using Unreal Engine, you can there's an Unreal Engine option right there. But yeah. I'm basically using Unity, so you can use Unity. Uh, license is 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 fine. Uh, it's not as uh, it's not crucial. So we can just like leave it as it is. So you can just create a repo. So it just takes a few time. Uh, I'll just look at the questions. Uh, where's the GitHub Desktop Git graphic tree? Uh, basically, uh, yeah, uh, it doesn't. I will say it doesn't have a graphic tree, which is while the one of the things I don't like about GitHub Desktop, honestly, but again, uh, if you can choose to, uh, uh, you can choose like other source tree if uh, this is important to you. Yeah. Uh, can we prepare our Git repository team before the hackathon starts? Uh, Furhan, is it possible? Uh, I I'll say possible. Uh, but Furhan, can you say that is it, uh, possible to prepare Git repo before hackathon starts, Furhan? All right, it's all right. Uh, we'll bring back like to, to the question this later. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So basically, this is uh, yeah. So uh, so this is something that you tell us about the Git LFS. So uh, basically, uh, this uh Git LFS uh, basically is basically it's called a large file system. So uh, 
But so I'm not gonna go through the give last file system, which I I'm gonna I'm gonna go through later in terms of like guidelines. So we can just choose not now, and then uh you can just choose a publish repository uh to GitHub just to publish it online. So uh again uh just a few details just to make sure keep this code private is totally up to you, and uh you can just choose publish by repo. It will take a while to uh publish. So as you can see, this is already uploaded. Uh, yeah. So as you can see, right. So just to make, just to check. So if you can just choose. Uh, so basically, so this is basically the project that you just up that with just updated. You can say this like this is two minutes ago. Yeah. So basically, so yeah, we got our first step. So which is we got your hackathon project up on GitHub. Yeah. So this is basically how you set up the project. Yeah. So uh so the next thing uh when once we got the GitHub like project online is to invite your team members, of course. So uh this is something that this is you need to do it on github.com. So uh so basically, for example, like this is the you have to go to the settings menu. So you have to go to the settings. Uh, so you can go to the settings and then you go to collaborators and then you can just like, you can see that here that uh, you can choose that number that collaborators uh, to be added. So you can choose the username, like basically your team members. Uh, so once you once, uh, uh, once you send an invite to the, uh, to your team members, your team members is, uh, your team members will uh, receive basically like an email invite and yeah, and your team members, you have to accept the invite. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, uh, they, they were not able to gain access to the repo. So once you gain access about that and get, gain access with the repo, uh, you can choose uh, in GitHub desktop. So you can choose, so you go back to your GitHub desktop and then uh, you can choose a clone repository. So if you click on that, uh, so, you, so you can choose, you can find out uh, the, according repository that you're just invited in. And uh, yeah, you can choose like, where do you want to save? Yeah, and they just like clone it. It will take some time to download everything through. And then you can just uh, write out right when the cloning is complete, you can access the project right away. Yeah. So uh, one last thing to mention is that just to ensure that your team members are like using the same Unity version, uh, so basically, like when when you are opening your project with Unity Hub, uh, so it basically it will show you like what's the Unity version. Just make sure, uh, all your team members are using the same Unity version, uh, so that it doesn't cause problems while syncing with GitHub. Yeah. So so right now, uh, your project, uh, your project has already synced with GitHub, and your team members has uh, already uh has already uh, ha have access to a project. Now, while you work, now, now you are adding some edits uh, to your project. So you are making progress, basically. So for example, like, for example, this is like, sorry. So for example, this is your hackathon project. So I'll just like, so I'll just like bring, just like do like a very simple edit, for example. So let's just, let's just say I just, I just add a cube. Uh, just to make a very easy scene change. So I click save on the scene and then you choose a uh, GitHub desktop. Uh, so you can basically see like, you can see there's some like file changes. So this is the uh, project that we've just uh, edited in. Uh, so you can, so you can see that this is the file change that we just changed. So what we want to do is to like push these changes online uh, so that uh so that like others can like see your changes. So uh, before we push that, so we have to like insert some like, summary, uh, just and a bit of a description, just to like, I will recommend just to give very specific context of what the change is about. So let's say I will say like, add a cube, for example. Description, you can feel free to add in more, but I just like keep it simple. And then I choose commit to main. So uh, you can see like the history, like, so this is a history list. You can see that like the app cube like is already like committed, but there's one more step that you need to do. So you can see like this icon here. So it says that this commit has not been pushed to the remote. So by remote repository means that 
uh it doesn't work on it doesn't uh it's still not online yet so i have to choose you have to click this button which is the push origin so i'm just gonna push this button and then it'll just take a while to upload uh your changes online so you can see that so when we look back into our project let me just do a quick refresh so you can see that now like here now this is updated uh so your sample already updated so it's basically already been online so uh yay so you have successfully like push your changes into github yeah so basically this is a very simple way of uh just like updating your changes so so some uh some just like some basic guidelines uh while we are pushing uh to github as i mentioned uh it's best to provide specific details in your commit descriptions so that it helps you uh track what the commits uh what the couple commits are represent uh for future reference and one thing that i like to uh advice is that it's important like to push regular small commits rather than just like everything in one go. So for example, like uh let's say you have like implemented this uh if you you got one feature working and then you got another feature working. I would recommend to uh I, I would recommend like so for like for each feature that have completed, you commit like you push a commit uh uh, like mentioning like, oh, this feature, you have done this feature and then push another commit instead of like everything in one go because it's extremely risky. If your project, it can cause those issues, you can revert like much more easily. It, it's just like, think about like, uh, you think about like, like, like game state, like saving in games. Yeah. This is just a perfect analogy. Uh, yeah. And uh, just now we mentioned about the GIF large, large file storages. And uh, I want to say that if it's possible, uh, try not try to avoid including files that are larger than a hundred MB, else uh, your GitHub will get push uh, will, will 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 fail. Uh, it doesn't allow you to push remotely. Uh, so those files like so potential files which uh can be easily like exceed a hundred MB will include three D models and videos. So as uh as uh we probably mentioned, you can actually initialize a Git large file storage. Uh so that you can handle large files. But the thing the thing is that uh, if we upload too much files, because it takes up storage space, if we if we push too much uh, files which are larger than 100 MB, uh, eventually you we will need to pay like for extra storage space. So uh, I would say it's best like rather than just like letting it like being over the 100 MB, it's best for you to like to optimize your files directly uh, so that you don't need to wor worry about like storage space while you're, pushing your files. So uh, this one, I, I'm just gonna quickly just like go through it. So uh, basically like, let's say you want to uh, revert. So basically like you can just like, you. so basically if you want to revert like changes, like if let's say if you want to, you want to undo this commit, for example. So there are two ways, so which is extremely different. So uh, if you, if you, if you already push this online to GitHub, is you need to choose this to revert changes in commit. So basically what it does is that it pushes another commit uh, so that like whatever they will do on the previous commit, it will be, uh, it, it will be getting undone. But yeah, so another way, uh, like, so there's another option, which is a uh, reset to commit. So, uh, so imagine this is like another commit, for example, and then you want to reset uh, back to this commit. And uh, you can just choose like choose like this commit they want to reset to, and then you can just click reset to commit. And uh, you have to you have to you need to do some double check just to make sure that uh this uh, sample scene you can you just make sure. Or in case if you want to just discard discard your changes in general, you can just right click and then choose discard changes. Yeah, you can just discard. Uh, yeah, just to revert your file to a previous state. Yeah. So this is uh git reset and revert. Uh so right now let's talk about the important thing, uh, which is like branching and merging. So what branching and merging uh basically does is that as I mentioned, uh there will be some uh, simultaneous like edits uh 
between among your team members. So let's say like this branch is responsible for coding, this is responsible for uh VFX, and then this is responsible for UI. So it's important like to separate like branches uh amongst your team members so that like each team member is working on their own branch. Uh so that instead of working on the same branch, because uh working on the same branch is extremely risky, uh, because it can cause problems like while while syncing changes. So branching is a way better option as a is a much more common practice if you want to uh uh include like simultaneous edits uh with your other team members. So basically what I mentioned for Git branch, as I mentioned. Branching is crucial for team collaboration and management. And uh, I would say like for hackathon purposes, uh, each member should like ideally just like work on their own branch, like rather than working on the same branch simultaneously. Uh, because like if they, so if they work on, because if they work on the same branch, uh, because like one commit like comes after another, which can cause some problems when syncing, when syncing like changes. So, uh, for example, like you can have like one root branch, uh, which I'll recommend to be handled by by your by the de the developer of your team, and then like one sub branch like per team member. If your team member has to access the project, uh, access the project to update some changes, and uh, in and eventually we'll uh once everyone has has their updates, uh, we will just provide some proceed to merge all our sub branches so which is what you see here so like let's say you have some work you want your work and then you want to combine the changes uh you can just like do the merge so that like both of the updates are uh, are combined together yeah so i'm just show you briefly on how to like create a new branch so uh let me just see uh where's my github so give me one second Sorry, give me one moment, something. We need to uh, recap, maybe wrap up in the next few minutes. I know how much left, okay. right? Uh, uh, I'm going like almost like almost like half, but I can go through like, uh, just like very briefly. Uh, so I mean, yeah, I mean, merging part, of course, important. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. The rest, uh, maybe we can already share this uh, yep. on the motion so anyone can check that. Yep. Yeah. So basically just to, just to showcase like very briefly. So, uh, you can, so basically like, so you can see how uh, this is the branch and then you can, you can actually like select a new branch and then you can like, you create a new branch so that your team member will work on the new branch to update their changes. So uh, I'll bring an example. So uh, so let's say this is child branch, for example. So uh, uh, so let's say it most likely it would just like you can choose bring your changes to child branch. Uh, so this will work like most of the time, and then just like publish branch, and then uh. So if you want to, uh, so you can you can switch between branches. So you can you can what if we go back to the main branch, you can just choose on the main branch. So you can just bring your changes, and uh, yeah. So this is the merging section. This is the merging part. So you can choose uh, which branch that you want to merge. So you can choose this merge that you want to commit. Uh, because we have nothing updated. So but but so that's why this one is uh disabled. But you can just click it just to merge. Uh, your, uh, your GitHub, uh, updates. Oh, this is not sharing. Oh, so sorry about that. Uh, just give me one second. Yeah. Uh, so sorry about that. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, so basically, just like I mentioned, I'm just like. Uh, I'm just elaborate again. This is where you've uh, you can choose which branch that you want to develop. Ideally, you want like each branch uh, per team member, so uh, you can just 
click it to switch the branch and then you can update your changes from here. And then, uh, so from the main, uh, you can choose it. You can, if you want to merge it with the child branch, uh, you can just choose it to merge so that you can click on this branch and then you can just choose a uh, create a merge commit and then you can just push it. Yeah. So this is what merging does. Uh, so just, uh, just, just a quick, uh, uh, just to say like, I I would say like it's recommended to merge the child branches into the main branch first. Uh, then like once the merging is complete, uh, then, then you can just do the other way around. So make sure that everyone is, uh, everyone is, uh, do everyone is has synced to have their changes synced. Yeah. So, yeah. So let's talk about the nightmare while merging commits, which is a uh, merge conflicts. So, uh, so just a just a simple explanation about what, what merge conflicts are. So for example, there's a cube like which is uh in white color originally. So you have like team member one, uh like changing like this cube color to red. And then you have another team member which uh make this color to blue. And then when you do the merging, then GitHub doesn't know that whether the cube should be red or blue. And then this is required uh your team members uh to intervene. To choose like whether it should be red or blue, so uh, this is an example of the merge conflict because uh, GitHub doesn't know that which one to choose. So, uh, so this is just a very simple example. Uh, it could be a uh, very uh detrimental depending on the complexity of the merge conflict. So, uh, as I said, it could be merge conflicts can be highly detrimental, and even like ruin your project. So uh I'm afraid to say that there's like there's no one side fits all, but there are do some there are some practices uh which to minimize the chances of uh merge conflicts happening. Uh so in case a merge conflict happens, so uh how to resolve them? Uh so uh, I'll say some files are very easy to to resolve the merge conflicts. So I'll show you an a quick example of uh the GitHub workshop. Uh, so for for example, so let's say like this is a, I want to like merge this uh with this child branch. So, I'll click choose this and then choose merge. So you can see like, there you can see that there are two conflicted files. So let's see like what is going on, and uh, you can see like there there are two uh there so basically there are two files that are, they are they have the merge conflict. So for example like this script has a merge conflict. Let's see what is going on. And uh, you can see. Uh, just want to double check: is the screen sharing? Yes. All right. All right. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, so basically, what merge con so basically, if you notice like the merge conflict, you can notice this kind of like headers. So I'm just using a uh, using the example uh that we shown earlier. So like basically, GitHub doesn't know like whether it's red or blue. So you will need to like delete like either like one of them or like you can just like let's say like it's supposed the color is supposed to be it's supposed to be red so you can just like delete this you can just like do some text changes and then just uh you have to make sure that so one thing important thing to make sure is that you have to remove those headers uh otherwise it will still be considered as a merge conflict so uh let's just uh so it's supposed to be red uh, let's save the changes and just go back. So as you can see, right, once it's resolved, it said no conflicts remaining. So I'm going to bring another, uh, I'm going to bring another, uh, more complex example, which is, uh, uh, scene, scene conflicts. Uh, so I will ugly say that scene conflicts are one of the most complex, uh, merge conflicts, uh, which is, uh, very tricky to resolve. So let me just show you. So, uh, so basically, if you so basically, this is a scene unity file, and you can see uh, there's a lot of data, which is where I would say it is very tricky to uh to uh like resolve like manually. So uh sometimes when your scenes like getting larger and larger, uh it's very tricky, and especially if you're not sure like what those mean, it's very hard to do it by manual. <laughs> so uh <clears throat> one. 
Well, so one of the recommended changes, and I would say it's not an ideal solution, but uh, I would say like one well, of the common ways they can do like is they can choose like which file <clears throat> that uh you want the which file changes that you want to retain. Do you want to retain like from the root branch, or you want to retain use the file from the child branch? So the choice is depending on the scenario. Uh, so because like if we want to choose uh uh this scene uh. From the root branch you need to you kind of need to redo there's no simple way around it unfortunately uh so it's up to you to decide like which one is easier to redo the updates so uh you just i like, have to choose uh which file yeah so once you choose it you can just do a continue merge so again you can just uh once uh you successfully like merge the changes you can just push it as usual as how you did with the the github yeah so basically this is how basically like two of the common ways of uh resolving merge conflicts yeah so uh yeah so uh as lot as a lot of you like are looking like uh looking for what are the common ways for merge conflicts so i will say here are the most common practices so uh first of all is that you have to be like uh you have that like, extremely like killer communication and coordination uh regarding uh yeah regarding uh your each and every of your team members tasks and make sure that uh if possible try to make sure that they are so just to make sure that they are changing like like different files based on their role so for example like the developer is like in charge of the coding scripts and uh your ui will be like in charge of the asset changes and one team member will be in charge of the vfx yeah so, so this is a uh, one aspect of a uh, team so of a uh, of, of team of a uh, team hackathon, yeah. So uh, one tips that I would say uh because as I mentioned like scene uh like uh scene conflicts are very tricky to solve. I will suggest like to duplicate your scenes uh either to like to be used for child branches. Or just like just duplicate your scene for backup just in case, because uh yeah, as I mentioned, uh making scene changes on the same, uh making the changes on the same scene across different branches, is extremely risky. So uh, I'm gonna bring like one example. So this is a this is a project of a of a MVP that I work with as part of the submission. So one so like one uh, um. Let me just check. Yeah, so uh, one thing that let so let's say this is the scene, and then I want uh to have uh like my team members to access the scene. So basically, what I'll do is to duplicate a scene into into like kind of like a template. So, like this is like a sample template. So like this is for for everyone's use. So, I I'm ask I'll be asking like team members if they want to use the scene, they can just like duplicate it, and then like so for example, this is one of my team members. So uh they'll be using like this scene. So like, so this will not be, uh, this won't be disrupted by the main scene, which will be using, which will be used like as the main build. And, uh, and uh, one, another suggestion, uh, which already, yeah. So, uh, so one, another suggestion, which is uh, to utilize prefabs instead of like saving in, in scenes. Like for example, like this uh, OVR setup, uh, this OVR setup, uh, if your team member uh need to update changes uh to the uh to the OVR setup, for example, you can just like make it as a prefab, or even you can make it like as like a prefab variant. So uh prefab variant is basically like a prefab or the prefab. So you can just like you can just like drag it and then like choose it as a prefab variant. It's also another way to back up uh your game properties uh so that it doesn't get affected by the original prefab. Yeah. So yeah, as I said, uh, using prefabs, uh, as a way to back up your assets, and uh, once you're done with the merging, uh, and so one final tip with the merging, uh, you always like allow for some extra buffer time, uh, preferably around like one hour while doing the merging, especially when you're approaching the deadline, and I would say is uh recommend to like merge, uh, regularly, especially when your 
root brush is uh, dependent on your asset updates. And of course, give yourself some extra time to resolve any conflicts. Uh, just so instead of like doing everything like last minute with the merge conflicts. And uh, after resolving like merge conflicts and uh, apply like, any necessary updates uh, just to fix everything, uh, just to make sure that, uh, just to make sure that you test your app behavior thoroughly, just to ensure that everything works intended. So this is very important because you really don't want like your build to be not working when you submit the build. Yeah. So I'm looking around questions. So uh, Sam says that one thing we did before was to only allow leave that to access to main and require the overseas module. Yes, uh, this is an excellent strategy. Uh, yeah, so basically you will want uh, your lead developer to be in charge of the of your main branch and then like we'll be doing the mergers just to check that everything is all right. Yeah, so again, that's an excellent strategy. And uh, uh, Andrew says that if it works for prefab, so that change just doesn't matter. Yep, uh, yeah, that's also excellent advice. Uh, as I mentioned that it's better to update your properties with prefabs instead of scenes. Yeah. So that to be merged memory copy on the building against them in a small duplicate prefabs. Yeah. So yeah, so I'll I'll recommend so as Aaron uh has a good point. Uh it is better, like it's definitely infinitely better to use prefabs. Uh my point is that if like in case like one of your team members uh need to use your scenes, uh use your scenes just for testing purposes, it's best to duplicate uh rather than like updating the editing the main scene uh which you, uh which is like which is very risky that's why uh it's best to not to update uh the scene update the scenes like, across like different branches which is uh we're trying to avoid that as much as possible yeah so uh uh this is a uh, this is and this is uh that's all the advice that i can uh share with and of course uh I wish best wishes to everyone participating in XR Hack and uh, for those in Stockholm. Uh, and we'll be seeing you in person as well. Uh, thank you so much. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Ray, for uh, making this very, very important topic yeah. uh, much more understandable and condensed. Uh, are we sure that we answered everyone's question on the channel uh... and on the? I think we answered right. Uh, did we answer the? Did we answer the question regarding whether we can prepare our Git repo before the hackathon starts? Just to uh, double check. I don't know what does this mean. Like Git repo, uh, is it a? Is it counted as a line of code or not? That's. Uh, question. I wouldn't say it is more like uh, make sure that all team members will have access like to the project. Yeah. I mean, but this, there won't uh... be any. Uh, I know. Uh, this, how long yeah. does it take usually to prepare? Uh, it's it's kind of like pretty pretty like simple actually. Yeah. So it just like take kind of like five to ten, fifteen, five to ten minutes. I would say. So. Okay. What then, do you think? Then I think it's best that uh, you are doing there. But if you need to download any SDK, Unity, Meta package, please please do that. Even download your laptop uh, before coming. Uh, these kind of things, of yep. course, uh, definitely uh, accepted. I mean, yep. you, we just don't expect you to start writing a code line or prepare and produce an asset. Other than that, feel free to download all the SDKs, yep. everything needed. Uh, internet, most probably good in all locations, but still, when everyone is downloading at the beginning of the hack, it will be definitely a shortage of uh, bandwidth. So just to let you know, as a person who joined lots of hackathons, uh, I can tell that this is a very nice uh, package before before you come. Um, perfect. I think we have time. We already have over six hours of workshop, nonstop, back to back. So thanks. I know how many people. Maybe someone, if you want to uh, raise your hand, if you are the ones who really stayed here for the last last six over six hours raise your hand <laughs> amazing i hope you enjoyed and then we didn't so much make you fall asleep oh great great mm. amazing amazing so you survived six hours i'm sure that for those who survive six hours they can survive 48 hours too 
<laughs> in the hackathon. Um, I hope it was very useful for everyone. Uh, everything will be available on demand on the Notion. Give us one, two days to make sure that everything is available, but not only videos, but also links or maybe slides that will be available. And the channels is already open. So you can already submit your question if it's not being addressed here, there, so that the person responsible of that category will answer or the company sponsors who are sponsoring will answer that. That's the most important part that I would say uh, that let's make sure that no questions left behind. Um, and now we are coming to the end of this long online workshop day. This is just the beginning. The hack is starting uh, for London a few days and Cologne as well. Um, Stockholm and Istanbul, we have still time, but we want to make sure that you first get a little bit of rest to make sure that you are ready for this very interesting hackathon. I hope I hope everyone is um, looking forward to start using these nice superpowers and toys that we will provide for you uh, and then create something really impactful for the not only XR but AI AI as well uh, landscape. Thanks everyone for joining. Thanks you. Thanks Ray for joining as well. Um, I'm just trying to check if there's any questions before leaving. Um, perfect. I hope everyone is on Discord, Notion. If you have access to these two, it will be very easy to communicate from now on. Uh, everyone is thanking to you, Ray. So it looks like it's good. So I hope that uh, all these feedbacks and uh, tips will help you to save time because you will definitely need every minute uh, to save every minute, it will help you much more quality on quality and uh, implementation. Thank you everyone for joining and thanks for your bearing with us in this six hours, six and a half hours long uh, sessions. Uh, looking forward to seeing uh, you in the hackathon. And then if you need anything, we will be on Discord. Feel free to look very closely on Notion as well. Uh, we will have a link to all the sessions today in the next few days. Be here with us. We will now um, prepare that and then make it available in Notion. We will make an announcement on Discord. Please, please make sure that you open the notification uh, on Discord because we will make announcements if you don't want to miss it. Okay? Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ray. And uh, see you in the upcoming hackathons. Bye.